Let's start here. You and I, we love the Oklahoma guys, right? Yep. Class of 2024 running back Xavier Robinson out of Carl Albert commits to Oklahoma on Tuesday. And this is a big back. And it pains me because the first clip on his highlight reel is him destroying my Bishop McGinnis fighting <laughs> Irish. Oh, <laughs> stiff arms a kid basically into the center of the earth on a touchdown run on McGinnis's field. But 6'2", already 220 pounds. I mean, tackle-breaking machine in Oklahoma high school football. What do you think, Ted? I mean, this you you don't let the top the top ranked players in the state get out of the state, and this may not be something that Lincoln Riley wanted that you would have done. But I love the mentality Brent Venables has taken with the in state guys. Yeah, I do too. I do too. Um, yeah, th- he. I think he's got some great versatility. He can be a a big physical downhill running back and he could also like i because i would imagine the kid's gonna end up putting on 15 20 pounds possibly or or has the ability to in a a strength and conditioning program and as good as they feed those guys up there he kind of reminds me like body type and athleticism of mikey henderson so i wonder if you know there's a uh a thought, and I don't even know, this is just me off the top of my head thinking that he could be like an H-back type of player too. Um, I don't know if they've thought about that at all, but that's, I, I just, I like that there's versatility there where size-wise, if he gets to that point, like maybe there's other ways he could help the offense as well. Um, not just as a, as a, you know, kind of traditional running back, but I love the size. I love the physicality. I love the fact that uh, he's an Oklahoma kid and he's staying staying close to home. I think all of it is excellent. I he's better than a three star running back. Oh my gosh, there's no doubt. And you know, you I, I think a lot of people just see the height and weight and they go, "Oh, awesome!" But when you watch him, the patience, uh, the feet, uh, the agility in tight spaces, like that's what stood out to me. That's that's where I was like, okay, this is a big guy that's got, I mean, he's got sweet, sweet feet. And I love where your head's at. You can never have too many big athletes that you can use as chess pieces on offense. I mean, it's the type of guy that you can start getting really creative with if you're an offensive coordinator. And you if you're using them in a variety of ways, that challenges. What type of personnel a defense has to play when a guy like that's on the field? So, you know, he's he's got good suddenness. Uh, and this is something that you and I talk about about in the wide receiver room, but I think it it also applies to the running back room. He's just a different build and a different in got a yeah. different style really the, the, than any other running back OU's got on the roster right now. Yep, and that's good. Uh, you need you need. You don't want, you know, five or six guys in that room that are all the exact same player. You'd like uh, to have a, a nice balance of of guys that have different strengths and weaknesses. You'd like to have a downhill physical back. You'd like to have a, a guy that's great in the open field. You'd like to have a guy that you can split out, run routes with. Um, yeah, just to have some variety, I, I think, is a good thing. And, you know, we've seen it in the past, like, I don't think it's just a Lincoln Riley thing. I think anyone in college football would like to have it a closer, All right? Whenever you get up second half, you you've already run 65 plays. That defense is worn out. Oh, guess what? Here's the, uh, here's the 230 pound downhill running back coming in, try and finish the game off tackling this guy. So I, I think that there's uh, plenty of roles for him there. Yeah. You think of, you know, how they use Trey Sermon, how they use Samaj P Ryan, in situations like that we'll we'll see but i'm rooting for xavier robinson i know that yep. oklahoma guy come on baby let's go make make us proud and kevin sperry that man is working quickly you got to carl albert we already got one of the titans in the boat now what three more you still got uh tristan haynes trane washington 
and Marcus James. Come on, Kevin Sperry. Keep doing good work down there. Let's go. Yeah, it won't take long through summer workouts and seven on seven before everyone's like, uh, yeah, I'm going to go play with that dude. Yeah. He's, so. he, I, uh, you've heard me say it. I think he's going to be incredible. Yeah. No, I'm with you. All right. Other news. Aaron Parks, offensive tackle, has entered the transfer portal. Not ideal, right? Because in a pinch, he is definitely a guy that can help you. We saw that in, in the bowl game, right? Jacob Sexton went down. Aaron Parks stepped in and played well. But in my opinion, he's just – he's not a starting-level player at Oklahoma. He, he just isn't and hasn't really been able to break through in his time in Norman. And when you look at the offensive tackle situation with Guyton and Rouse and Sexton and what they saw from Caden Green as a true freshman, early enrollee, uh, Jake Taylor's versatility along the offensive line. And then you always have the portal, right, to lean on. And Bill Beanbow has a hell of a reputation when it comes to developing players. I, I don't love seeing him go, but I honestly think you can get someone someone that can contribute more significantly moving forward with that scholarship spot. And that may sound harsh, but just kind of how I see it, Ted. Yeah. Yeah, I you know, it's I guess you never know, but my my instant feeling is whether it's Sexton is is Gosh, it's still early for him. You don't think he's able to do much right now, right? Six months in? Yeah, not able to do much, but, you know, he, I saw him out in spring ball and talked to him briefly about said his knee was feeling great, rehab was going great. So, yeah, and that's the thing is, you know, healthy Sexton is is ahead of Parks on the depth chart. Right. right? You know, remember that's Parks I'm, came I'm in. I'm wondering, now, like, if this is – obviously he gives you some depth that in a, in a pinch, as you mentioned, he can get in there and, and kind of hold point for you. But like, is this just a view for him of, of what it looks like in front of him right now? And if it looks good in front of him, you can't necessarily blame the guy. And I, I guess I'm saying maybe I, you could spin this as a good thing, right? That we're starting to shape up really good with some young talent. That's, stepping in front of some guys that previously have been rotational players, backups. And now that young group is, is starting to show out where everyone can kind of see the writing on the wall. Yeah, I absolutely. I, I do not view this really as a negative at all. I, I mean, I just don't with, when you look at the guys that, you know, they're younger than him, but certainly when you look at the measurables, the level of talent, their ceiling uh, are just, more exciting players. So I, I don't view it as a positive necessarily, right? Because right. you don't want to lose guys that could help you, you know, if a, you know, if a bad situation arises, but yeah, I, I think the way that you described, it, it's a good way of describing it, is that this should be exciting news when it comes to the development of some of these younger linemen. Do you think, how good do you think Aaron Parks is? Is he good enough to, to start at a non-power five? Yeah. Yeah. You know, going back to, you know, last year during spring ball, he was, he was working with the, you know, working with the first group some. So yeah. he's, you know, I think he can, I think he can play a lot of places. Change of scenery also can yeah. do a guy some good. So we'll see where he ends up landing and best of luck to him. Hope he goes somewhere in balls. Yeah. I, I, I do too. And uh, like, that just kind of ties back in when a guy leaves, we are always going to view it first because this is what we do. How does it affect Oklahoma? What does that right. mean for our depth chart? What does that mean for our offense or defense? But a lot of times it could be a good thing. Like I want everyone to go have some success. And I think, as you mentioned, he can play at a lot of places and, you know, i if if he can go start somewhere and get a couple of years of, of good football being a, a huge part of a of an offensive line, go do it. That's awesome. Yep. All right, let's get to call your shot. We asked you guys the most significant thing that has happened this week for OU football. Uh, this first one 
comes from at Kurt Sooner. And all he says is Jerry Schmidt. <laughs> A lot of tweets about old Schmidt over the last couple of days from some current players on the roster, Ted. And I, I would say the tweet that has gotten the most traction was the one that Dasan and Dave McCullough's dad put out of him with his boys in Norman. And is it's not awkward. It is what it is. Everyone's talking about how Dasan McCullough looks with his shirt off right now. That's just that's where we're at. That's where we're at in the uh in the college football cycle here in the state. Just talking about shirtless dudes. Well, and his dad's not a small guy, and he looks, looks like good. he's a foot taller than him, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he he looks impressive, and uh, younger brother looks really good too. And you know, I I know the whenever McCullough came came in, there's there's a bunch of high expectations, and rightfully so. And then you know he's playing a position where, you know, he he was fish out of water, right? Totally different than what he was used to, and you know. Had to tell some people, even had maybe some guys even up at OU, give him some time. Like, let him, let him, like, learn that role a little bit and learn some of the muscle memory and the movements there. And he got way better by the end of spring. Still has a long way to go. But physically, he looks like he's, I don't know, 20 pounds at least, maybe more whenever you're 6'6 or close to it like he is. And you can visibly see size like that usually means a significant weight increase, right? He's listed at 222 on the roster. Incorrect. No. <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> and it seeing the picture. And I'd say I studied it for a proper amount of time, right? A proper amount of time. He's starting to look more of like an outside linebacker body type to me. Mm -hmm. And I wonder what that means for where they see him in the defense. And if it is still the cheetah position, what's that mean for how Venables structures that role within the defense this season? Because when, it, if you got a guy looking like that, you're probably not going to ask him, you know, to be in a ton of man coverage as a true nickel, right? It's probably more of a, hybrid nickel outside linebacker playing, maybe bumping in the box a little more playing at the line of scrimmage more. I don't, it just made me start thinking about what that position could look like with him just looking the way that he does right now. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it's interesting. I will say this though, you know, he is, he's super thin in the lower body. Yeah. So I, you saw the big, strong upper body but he's super lean in the lower body so i do think that that suits him more than than like a typical edge guy you you those guys have some thickness to him um so he's kind of that hybrid role but you're right man it's it goes back to versatility right it gives you as a defensive coordinator you know it gives you some some different ammo like that you can use like got some size now i'll tell you right now justin harrington is a big dude as well um but Dasan gives you a little bit different different look there at you know six five and i i'm guessing 240 pounds who knows what he is but um yeah personnel packages different personnel groupings that you get it just gives you flexibility and ultimately that's what you want you want guys that can do more and you can use them as different chess pieces throughout and you know, if, if he can continue to get the mental part of it down, playing that cheetah position, which is difficult, I I think that I think he can do a lot of stuff. I think he can move to inside backer. I think he can play edge in certain situations whenever you're you're expecting pass and, and you just need guys to to pressure off the outside. So also you need guys like that running down on kickoff. You know, you can always use those guys on special teams and we're starting to build some quality depth there on the defensive side. Yep. All right, this other one comes from Mike Arona, and he said Stone, Tatum, and Winery did not commit anywhere else, <laughs> which is a great way of looking at it, right? David Stone uh, went on that Michigan State visit. As far as I know, no commitment to the Spartans after that one. Tatum, number one running back in the class. 
A lot of people projecting him to end up at Oklahoma. And then Winery, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people projecting him to end up at Oklahoma. So you're talking about, you know, two top 10 players in the country with Stone and Winery at oh, along the defensive line and then Tatum, the number one running back in the class. Oh, you, it seems like they're in a good position to land those guys. And it helps that they haven't committed anywhere else, just like our man Mike mentioned. That's a good point, Mike. Well done. We're still in the fight, okay? Yeah. We're still in the fight. And, you know, according to a lot of people that are tied in, you know, either getting info from coaches perhaps or even from the players themselves, it, it sounds like OU is is in a good spot, perhaps even leading on all three. Yep. 